Chris and Paul, it is great to have you back on the Diesel Podcast to talk about OBSs and a really cool road trip you guys just went on. Well, we appreciate you having us out, man. Definitely. Uh, the first, the first episode we did, it was cool. There was a ton of response we got from it, and the OPS fans are they're passionate, and they uh, they definitely let us know they they wanted to hear from you guys again and and talk about uh, talk about some more some more truck info. Well, I think it's because the OBS scene is is more of a culture than it is just a truck. You know what I mean? That's true. That's a really good point, and that's what makes it exciting to talk about is the culture and the passion that's there. And I remember shortly after our last episode, you guys were telling me that you're going to go on a road trip. And I wanted to ask you, where'd you guys go? You know, how long was it? What'd you guys do? How many trucks did you take with you? Um, so we decided to go to the No BS OBS event in Oregon this year and then kind of make a, an excursion, I guess, if you will, out of it. Uh, well, being being in Texas, uh, the OBS OBS event was held in Albany, Oregon. So, obviously, it's nineteen hundred miles, no matter which way you slice it. So we decided, why not just make it a vacation in the uh, in the meantime? We uh, we spent twenty two days on the road driving the uh, driving two crew cab long bed four wheel drive OBSs. I think in total we we wound up uh, about fifty nine hundred miles per truck. So something like right at twelve thousand miles is what we drove in those things over 22 days. That's a lot of driving. Yeah, and and even though it was 22 days, it was still a lot of driving crammed into 22 days. The the the, the point the, the point to most of this is we could have t- uh, taken a new truck or we could have flown or whatever, but we decided that since we were going to go to the the largest OBS truck show uh, on the West Coast. Yeah, bas- basically the largest one we've ever been to. There was right at 160 trucks showed up. Everything from uh, you know bullnose trucks all the way up to OBS trucks. Um, and uh, we decided since we were going to do that, we would uh, we would kind of prove the durability of these trucks that we always talk about. You know, we always tell everybody that that these things are <clears throat> you know indestructible per se. So we decided to put that, uh, kind of put our money where our mouth was and prove it. What kind of, uh, what kind of fuel economy did you guys get on the, the trip? Um, so Paul's truck, and I just kind of give a little bit of back, uh, backstory on that. Paul's truck is a, uh, an automatic with 355s and my truck is a standard with 410s. And then, and then we'll back up a little bit more. Chris's is modified and mine is 100% bone stock. Oh, oh cool. We uh, we saw an average of right right at fourteen miles to the gallon. It was thirteen and some change for most of the trip. Um, we got better than that, kind of coming across Texas and New Mexico, but most of that's flat. So, you know, it, on average, most of the trip we were right at fourteen miles to the gallon, and that's seventy miles an hour or something like that. It's about what we averaged on the highway. Yeah. And each truck had an in bed truck camper plus you know three weeks worth of gear. So being that's pretty good loaded like that, we felt that 14 miles a gallon was pretty good. Oh yeah, yeah, especially being load, loaded down and and having everything for like you said three weeks of you know being on the road and going going around the country. Yeah, we kind of decided since we like traveling so much, we would just uh, make the best of it. Um, it was uh, Paul and I and then our two wives, and we brought the dogs with us, so we went. And we went uh, basically all the way over to California and up California to Oregon. And then when we left Oregon, we went all the way to Mount Rushmore and down. Oh, cool. Now, when, when you guys were at the event, what kind of what kind of things did they have going on? Was it um, like vendor row and, you know, things like that? Was it just, you know, like a... It was, there was a, a, a vendor row. Obviously we were there as, as a vendor and, and to meet, you know, our customer base that we never get to see on the, on the West coast. But mostly it was like we said at the, at the first, you know, it was, it's an enthusiast thing. Everybody that loves the trucks come out and, oh, your truck's cool. It's this color. Oh, you've done 08 axle swap or you've got a 460 with a, with a blower on it or, you know, first one thing or another. So there was a lot of just for lack of better word meet and greet if you will you know and everybody just enjoying themselves there was no stupid burnouts nobody was doing donuts in the parking lot 
it was strictly. I don't think Devin would have had much. Of, I don't think he'd like that very much. He's kind of a uh, uh, very particular about his about his place. That's for sure. Which that I you know I can't I can't blame him for that. And it uh it made for a really awesome event. Well, the thing is, is nobody even attempted to do that because that's this is more of a culture than it is just a fad. I think personally. Now at at the event, how? How many of them would you say were diesels? Was it predominantly diesel trucks or kind of, you know, 50-50? Yeah, I was going to say about 80% of them were diesels, and that's from six nines all the way up to the Power Stroke. So there was pretty much everything you could think of there. It's kind of it's kind of interesting to see some of those guys that were showing up in those trucks. Uh, it's interesting to see how much nicer uh, a lot of those trucks are on that in that part of the country just because I guess they don't have the, the rust that the East Coast has. And then, like, Texas, we've got the the balding Texas sun, you know. So it's it kind of it bakes the paint. But up there, those guys have been driving those trucks for 20 years. Some of them had 400,000 miles on them. You couldn't tell. It was crazy. Wow. That would definitely be, it, it sounds like something that would be so cool to go to. Even not having an OBS, it would be cool to go to something that sounds like it's more low key, more about like the culture that you said, and then being able to see people. I'm sure they came from all over the country or yeah, you know, yeah, all over a region. They were, they were people as, as far away as uh, uh, Las they, Vegas. and Yeah, they came from Vegas. They came from Boise, Idaho. They I mean, we were obviously the furthest away because we came from Texas, but, you know, there were people that were coming down from Canada. So, you know, technically well, an international event if you wanted to say that. Well, and, and like last night, they actually sent us a Facebook video of a new venue because they they were out of room this year. We actually overflowed into another place's parking lot because there wasn't enough parking spaces. So they're setting up for even more trucks for next year well, which was pretty incredible if you think about it because it was the very first year they ever held it so for for those guys to put on the very first show and it overflow the venue they were at was was pretty good well and that that goes back again to the the enthusiast part of this deal and the people that want to come out because they they are all, are all like-minded in the same aspect you know for trucks that everybody else is there there's no like oh, well, you've got big, stupid wheels on your truck, or, oh, yours is lowered, or, oh, you've got 80 inches of lift. It's it's none of that. It's, oh, your truck's cool because of this, or, hey, come look at this on my truck, or, hey, I've been wanting to look at your truck for a while, or, wow, man, this one's so stock and all original. This is so cool. So it's, you know, it's kind of all of everything rolled into one. It's definitely reinforcing a theme that has, and I think naturally come up on the podcast over the summer, and that's been the importance of events. And I, I think it goes back to the culture, right? Which there's different ones within diesel. You know, there's the OBS side, there's other makes and models or different parts of it that do it, and that's where there's this huge kind of surge. I think we're seeing, and you guys experienced, and then you play a part in it as well with what you guys focus on is the people who are showing up, they're there because they want to be there. They come from all over. So you're having this this gathering of people who are really excited, really passionate and knowledgeable about the trucks or different aspects of it. Well, that's that's like uh, I just came back from the Carlisle All Truck Nationals in, in Carlisle, Pennsylvania. And there was, uh, I think we had 78 trucks there that you know, we're OBS and they, they came from all over to gather up at that event too. So I, you know, like you said, it's, it's part of the culture and everybody that has a like-mindedness, you know, we all come from different walks of life. You know, you may be a logger, you may be working IT, maybe you, uh, you know, maybe you ride the trash truck, maybe you, you know, dig ditches for a living. It doesn't matter. Everybody all comes together for one common good and goal at the end of the day, you know, and that's to, that's to enjoy the truck and the camaraderie of the event. I think what really enforces that too nowadays is uh, is you're starting to see a lot more very specific events, um, kind of like Matt Mayer's event, 7-3 Jamboree, that they hold in Tennessee every year. You know, that's a specifically 7-3 event. That 10 years ago wouldn't have been an event because I guess there wasn't as big of a following for those kind of things, if that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. That that's a good point as well as 
And I think as an enthusiast, you know, we all have our favorite year range or brand or what it might be. But it's so cool to be around like-minded people because we can almost be, I mean, social media is great for seeing what's going on and being able to, you know, network and, and things like that. But when you actually get to a physical place and you're able to see the trucks and talk to the people, yeah, it's, and I imagine especially having a company like you guys do that focuses on these trucks, you probably get tremendous feedback from these truck owners about, Hey, I, I ordered this from you or, Hey, can we get this? Or I want to, I wanted to ask you guys that too. Like what kind of feedback did you guys get for OBS parts and different things that the enthusiasts want to see? You know, like, you know, at the OBS and OBS event, um, we brought, when I say we brought, we, we shipped quite a few sets of our headlights and tail lights and a lot of the products that we manufacture ourselves. I think we came home with like three parts in total. We shipped just 15, 20 boxes. <laughs> if that gives you an idea of, you know, the people that showed up, they pretty much bought everything we brought. <laughs> well, it, it, you know, to kind of answer your, your question a little further, you know, when you when you actually get to put a face with a name instead of just a picture on the internet and, and actually get to talk with that person about their specific truck and why they built it a certain way, you know, that, that brings a whole different level to what you're doing versus just you know, here, here's you this part that I put in a box and ship to you via UPS, you know. Well, well in an Amazon world, it, uh, it makes a huge difference to be able to actually shake hands with the guy you're buying parts from and know that he's he's a, a, a pickup truck guy or know that, that he knows what he's actually talking about and you're sending your money to somebody that's actually going to uh, to take care of you in the long run. But but we also like, you know, to, to further that point, you know, there was – a ton i mean i've got a list eight pages long of hey man make this part or hey can we get this part or that what is, about this deal, yeah. and and we get phone calls and emails and stuff daily based off of that like hey we would like to see this made hey we would like to see that made can you do this can you do that and it's it's great because when we get when we get to go out and meet with the with the customers and stuff it's they can show us on their truck what they're wanting to get done and, and things that, you know, need to be made or, or stuff that could be more beneficial. And you get to actually see the ideas. And, you know, I've had people sketch stuff out on pieces of paper and show me stuff on pieces of paper and all that. So it, it's pretty, pretty cool to be able to see all that. It definitely makes it so, you know, like as a business owner, you know, you guys are very knowledgeable and are around these trucks and are passionate about them. But the, the the customer base out there, I imagine that's invaluable to be able to be there in person. Of course, the trucks are there. And they might think of something maybe you didn't. Or they might say, you know, we get four or five, six people, ten people, a hundred people that are, are wanting to see something. It's like, all right, well, when we get back, we've got some some work to do and some things to get ready and, and, and put it on the site. Because there's probably other OBS truck owners out there that, that want the same thing. Exactly. You know, without a doubt, it's uh, it's definitely beneficial to go to events and uh, and actually meet the people that that you're dealing with. And it's it's, I guess it's just as beneficial in both directions. You know, it's it's beneficial for somebody to uh, to be able to meet us and, you know, you, you kind of make personal friends with uh with the people that you're buying parts from. But it works the same way for us too. You know, because we are enthusiasts. It's the reason why we do it. So, you know, to be able to go out and to meet the people that, that are buying parts from us is just as cool on our end. Um, and I, you know, I... Well, and, and let's just, let's back up a little bit there. You know, when we were out and on the trip, we run into lots of people that we know from all over the country. And we stopped in their towns and had lunch with them and they showed us different sites and they showed us different things. So we even get to experience the the culture of the local places that we went just based off of the friendship that you create with another a like-minded enthusiast. Or uh, how about uh, how about the guy that was in the um, the the campground that found us? Where were we at? We were at Diamond Lake. Diamond Lake, just and outside of Crater Lake. Yeah. Yeah, he came over and he was like, "I think I recognize these trucks. Are you the guys from Complete <laughs> Performance?" And I was like, "This is kind of scary if you think about it for a second, but you know, yeah." <laughs> And then we laughed, and you know, we, we drank a beer together, and it was pretty cool to uh, to to see that that you know what we what we were doing with our trip and what we were uh, what we're doing with the company is actually making a reach enough. Then in a remote region of Oregon, that somebody finds you that knows who you are. I mean, we had no cell signal where we were. I think they pretty much piped sunlight in to where where the area was at. And there's a guy in the park that knows about the event. 
I think his phrase was, you guys are my people. <laughs> so, you know, it was it was definitely interesting to see. But, you know, a while back I was talking with a friend of mine that's that's in this, and, you know, you can live in an area your entire life and never see anything in that never see everything in that one area and you live there so when you travel the country all you know is is either what's on google or you know what random pictures you found in a magazine somewhere you don't know all the cool spots and all the different places to go yes social media and stuff like yelp and things like that have made it better but when you get to meet people that live in that area that know that area they can take you to the cool places and and show you the different things you know that that not everybody gets to experience. And that's part of, I guess, the connecting with the car culture is, you know, hey, we're going to be in this XYZ town tonight. You know, what's cool to do? Well, hey, man, we can meet up and we can go for beers at this local place. And then if you want, we can go hang out at the Rock Quarry and, you know, catch pictures of all of our trucks together. So you get to see, you get to see their personal like what they enjoy in 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 the local area and then you get to experience something new at the same time what were some of the really cool say kind of hidden gems you guys got to experience across the whole trip where people you know said hey you got to check out this place or this restaurant or this lake what were some of the the stories that you guys were able to to gather from the road trip oh man there's there's all kinds of stuff we stopped at uh uh, one of our buddies places in, in Nebraska is, uh, and he said, Hey, you, you got to go check out this barbecue truck in town. <laughs> and literally it was like an old RV that was converted and, and a couple of, uh, 16 year old entrepreneurs were running it. And it's probably some of the best barbecue that I've, that I've ever had, you know, it's just on the courthouse square in the middle of a town of 600 people. I was going to say, mind you, this is in Nebraska in a town of 600 people. So there's not a whole lot going on as far as like something that you would think there'd be a food truck in town. But man, I'm telling you that put that, that food truck had some pretty awesome, uh, pretty awesome barbecue. But we, I mean, we saw all kinds of stuff. We even were in, uh, <laughs> we were in Wyoming and there was a restaurant that said pizza, pasta, and tacos. Now that's just not a combination <laughs> that should be put together any day of the week. So, I mean, you get to see all kinds of stuff as you travel the country, you know? Well, I mean, and we uh, we were able to uh, to to meet up, even just like not necessarily seeing sights or whatever, but just meet up with friends of ours and just uh, you know have dinner with them or whatever. You know, like the trip that Paul just took to uh, to Pennsylvania. Unfortunately, I didn't get to make it, but um, but when when they when he was going was it Ohio, yeah, or uh, in Bellefontaine, he uh, he stopped and five or ten people met up with him uh, at a at a local pizza joint there, and then just everybody just hung out and. And talked about trucks, just like kind of impromptu car so, show. <laughs> some some people that I hadn't seen in five years, and we picked up conversation like we had just left off yesterday. You know, you know, kind of that, something cool. Kind of something you said a while ago about uh, about how it's uh, the the events and stuff like that are so important. Um, they're I mean they're important enough to to drive you know across the country for a lot of people to be able to go to them. It's not just in the OBS industry, you know, or like the the OBS market itself, but like. Industry wide, how many people do you know, like Ryan Milliken that goes racing and he'll go racing in California and he's from Florida? You know what I mean? Well, or or yeah. like like us knowing you, you know, uh, Ryan brought us to to ATS way back, you know, and we did the the training at ATS, and then that's how that's how we know you, you know, and it's all yeah. part of the the culture in it in and of itself. I was going to mention that, yeah. Is that's I remember meeting you guys there, and then I don't know three or four months later I go to Shide, and I'm standing there, and I'm like, wait, there's Chris and Paul. I just met him a few months back, and it's like you can just connect it, and no matter where you're at, you just pick up right where you left off. Well, and and that's the thing too. Like, say, just say I'm in Denver for whatever reason, you know, just I'm not even traveling for the diesel side of things. I'm just in Denver, and my rental car has an issue, and I am stuck. I can call you, and you're you're going to come get me, you know. I, I don't I know I know somebody in every town that I'm going to and that's that's cool in and of itself because a you know even if I'm not having an issue we can catch up and have some beers and just enjoy hanging out and talking trucks and guns and cars and whatever else on the planet 
you know so that's that's really cool to be able to go someplace that you may go to once every five years and actually know somebody that's there and can actually you know connect with somebody it's one of the things that's so fun about doing a podcast is being able to talk with people and get their stories and we have listeners all over the country and the world even and just being able to talk about things like this that they're going to identify with even if they have a duramax or a cummins or something else they've gone to an event and know that feeling of running into that guy they saw at something you know some other either racetrack or event or something like that and being able to tell these stories which is really fun well like um this last uh these last events i went to i went to an event in st louis and then drove over to to pennsylvania but I did a an interview kind of kind of almost like this with a guy there with his truck and he had ranch hand bumpers on his truck and so I asked him you know where'd you come up with them and things like that uh, as part of the video and he said it's a funny story I was at uh, I believe it was Shides now don't quote me on this 100% but it was pretty sure it was Shides and I parked in the parking lot and another guy in an OBS parked in the parking lot right next to me. And I was up in the stands and looking across and could see my truck, he said. And I was telling my buddy that was with me, man, those ranch hand bumpers that's on his truck would look really good on my truck. And just so happens that the guy sitting behind him owned the other OBS. And he said, man, I don't like the ranch hands. I want factory bumpers. And they exchanged bumpers in the parking lot of Shides. And that's how he got his bumpers on his truck. But what, I mean, what are the odds? And, you know, that's kind of one of those things of, you know, uh, right place, right time. But it, it kind of goes back to the to the whole scene of meeting up with somebody and, and connecting on the same level, you know? That's very true. And w- one day what I want to do is just go to Shides and walk through the parking lot. And you see so many clean trucks. And, you know, if you have a particular truck in mind, I remember when I walked through, I'm like, I need to bring some money. And just put like a lawn chair down and wait for the guy to come back and be like, "Do you want to sell this truck?" <laughs> this is exactly what I want. <laughs> right? There's there's so many times that 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 kind of thing happens. You know, it's it's just kind of unreal when you think about it. But yeah, like I mean, there, you go to you go to events and, and the trucks not even in the show are some of the the nicest trucks on the you know in in the area. Yeah. Oh, for sure. And and speaking of nice trucks, I wanted to ask you guys. You know, last time. We chatted, you talked about finding trucks and how you guys, you know, check them out, get them, and then offer them for sale. And I've been seeing a lot of posts you guys have been doing with that and some really clean OBS trucks. Like these things are, they're immaculate. They look almost brand new. And I wanted to ask you guys how that's going. Yeah, so we we bought a long time business called Handpick Trucks. Um, it was based out of Virginia when we bought it. Yeah, they, they were based out of Virginia. Um, it, long story short, we were talking that it'd be cool to be able to sell OBSs as nice as what they used to sell, and they had kind of stopped selling trucks and had focused on something else in life. Chris made the comment, why don't we just call them and see if they want to sell it? So we did, and after a course of basically over a year, we come to a deal, closed the deal, and, and started handpicked trucks here in Texas. And literally we hand pick the trucks you know we we look for the nicest or the nicer trucks you know it, it can't be all beaten smashed up or you know four hundred thousand miles or this that or the other and then we get it back and then we go over it with a fine tooth comb you know we do pdr work on them and you know if if coolant bottle is yellow we we fix the coolant bottle you know and i mean it, it's just we want them to be as close to new as you can get without being able to teleport back to 1997 and buy one off the dealer lot. And basically, on, a, on average, it takes us about two weeks, two and a half weeks to get a uh, get a truck into shape from the time it, it, it's dropped off here at, at, uh, at our place to the time we can get it actually listed for sale. It's because we go through it, we change the fluids, we change the filters, we, uh, like you said, we, we replace all the, you know, the yellowed headlights or, you know, the old degas bottles or whatever. We, we fix every little knickknack thing that's wrong with the truck. It basically so that when you come buy a truck from us, it's it's as close as you can buy to a new one as possible. Like the two of them that we've got right now, we've got two extended cab long bed four wheel drives. One of them 
is probably the nicest OBS I've ever seen in my life. It's got 154,000 miles on it, but man, this thing is just absolutely it, meant. It looks like it has 154 miles on it. it wow. It, the, the truck came from Pueblo, Colorado, and, and the guy had a uh, uh, had a ranch in Decatur, Texas. And I'm, I'm assuming, now I, I didn't get this information from him, so this is just kind of an assumption on my part, but... I'm assuming probably the miles came from driving back and forth from his place in Colorado to his place in Texas, and it looks like it just sat inside a garage the rest of the, uh, the entire time. We we literally, you know, those barn find things. We, it was literally in a barn with dust all over the top of it because he didn't he didn't drive it anymore. He was just sitting, and he was like, "It's too nice for it to just be sitting, but I'm scared to drive it because it is so nice." So he wound up letting it go to us, and we've you know, PDR'd it, you know, for what few things it needed, and you know, got it up to quote unquote our standards, you know, as far as what a truck should should look like and should sell for. That's really cool. That's something that uh, that could be a whole podcast in itself is how to find these trucks, because that's what I think with the culture, you know, like, you know, the, the trucks are 20, 25 years old. We want to find that. And it can be so hard as an individual to try to locate a truck like that on our own. And you guys do that. So being able to connect that. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I mean, we spend weeks and weeks and weeks and weeks finding trucks because people send us links for trucks all the time, and and we are definitely grateful for that. But there's a lot of times when you get sent a link to a truck that, I mean, when you when you get down to it, it's it's junk. It looks okay, but you know, by the time you spend all the money to get it where it needs to be, it it's not. It's not what our customers need and or are looking for, you know. Well, kind of the business model we built, we, we're trying to build around this business is a uh, is is a um, a high end style of used car lot that you you know what you're getting and you know that you're you're getting only the best when you buy from from hand picked trucks. What well, I mean, you, you don't want to come to our place and there's a five thousand dollar truck sitting next to a twenty five thousand dollar truck. That's I mean. That's if that was going to be the case, then any buy here, pay here lot on the planet is where you want to buy your truck from. We want people to come to us and, and pick out a truck that is their their dream truck, if you will. Hey, you know, I was in high school and I had this color truck and I had to sell it, or my dad had this, or my grandpa had that, or I've always wanted a single cab red OBS, and here's the single cab one with, you know, a hundred thousand miles on it. So that's that's kind of our spiel with the with the hand pick thing is you know it needs to be as close to perfect as you can get and as close to what somebody is looking for you know like I said before without being able to transport back to 1997 and, and order it brand new. That's such a cool it's such a cool thing it gets me excited because I always. I like the racing side. I like the appearance, but when I see an older truck that looks like I did teleport back to 1997 or 94 or whenever it was, it's so exciting to see it. Somebody took care of it, and the, like that barn that barn find story you were telling, like that's that's so cool that somebody would take care of a vehicle like that, and now they just don't have a need for it, or you know, it's just sitting there. But they they know that someone else will appreciate it, and that's where it can go on to the next person. Well, and, and that's what it is 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 the appreciation for the vehicle. Now, somebody might buy it from us, and after they buy it from us, they may lift it and put twenty twos and thirty fives on it or whatnot. But nine times out of ten, when somebody buys something like this, they are looking for an all original, unmolested survivor, if you will, and and that's yeah. and that's what we want to bring to the market. I mean, there's. There's plenty of there's there's plenty of places where you can buy a modified truck, and Facebook Marketplace is filled with people that have gotten, you know, T four kits and eight inch lifts and 08 axle swaps and and all of that on their trucks. But there's very few places or or things where you're going to find an under two hundred thousand mile all original Survivor that you can buy that looks brand new. Think think about it like this, um, you, kind of what you were talking about a while ago. Um, say you go to the gas station, and you're putting you're putting fuel in your truck or whatever, uh, and a guy pulls up in a, a just an absolutely mint shape '96 F250 four wheel drive, and you're like, holy crap, where the heck did he get that from? You know, and you have to go over and ask the guy. You're like, you know, 
man, where'd you get this? Is it for sale? You know, it, it's that just doesn't happen with most things, you know, and it definitely doesn't happen with uh, uh, with newer trucks. Like, say you go buy a brand new truck, nobody just comes over and asks you about where you bought that new truck from because you can go to any car lot and buy one. You uh, you drive a you drive a crew cab short bed four wheel drive that's just absolutely just one hundred percent perfect, and uh, and I guarantee you every time you stop and get fuel, you're gonna have to have a conversation with the guy across the pump from you. Well. And, and the other thing, too, is, I mean, these trucks were bone stock, 215 to 225 horsepower at the flywheel, so they weren't torque monsters. And there's tons of new technology that's out, you know, and touchscreen dashes and 360 cameras and all of that. And you're still going to get more respect and more appreciation for your truck driving an all-original Survivor down the road than you are driving a you know, a brand new truck with a lift and and 22s and 35s on it. I mean, it's just, uh, again, back to the culture of things, you know. It's kind of the same thing as the 70 C10s are nowadays. Oh, it's so true. Recently, I was was getting fuel, and I could hear the distinct sound of a 12-valve pulling up. And I look around, and it's like a a regular cab, four-wheel drive, long bed. It looked brand new. I'm like, this guy, he had to restore this. Because normally you see them and, you know, they've either been modified or they've just been used hard. And this older guy gets out and I had to ask him the same thing. I had to ask him. And he's like, no, I bought this thing brand new. I just use it to, you know, move a trailer around. And it's like, I see that and I gravitate towards it. I can see a, you know, gorgeous like 2019 F-250 as well. But it's like I can drive to five or six different Ford dealerships and see pretty much the same thing. And it's that that thing that pulls you in you know in one day those trucks will be there but in current where we are currently the the culture is not there for them because a lot of people are are not enjoying the emissions regulations that's been forced upon the the market and you know that there's their i don't know their their style is there but like i really think that at the time ford designed the the obs truck they really knocked it out of the ballpark as far as design goes. It's got classic lines on it. The wheels were, I mean, for a stock wheel, you're not going to find a nicer stock wheel on anything on the market uh, from the dually truck to the single wheel truck. You know, they, they knocked it out of the park there. And, and just all of the styling cues that they put in those trucks are part of what makes them iconic, if you will, you know. And the 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 square shape and the, you know, I don't know. I, I don't know how to describe it properly, but anybody listening to this is going to know what I'm talking about and, and have their own way to, to, to describe that distinct look of these trucks. I can see everybody in their truck right now nodding going, yep, yep, that's exact. yep, you're right. <laughs> <laughs> Damn, I never thought about it like that. But, I mean, there's there's just something about them that it speaks to anybody, and, and part of it, I think, goes back to, so the the Cummins came out in in what eighty nine I believe it was with the twelve valve and then you had Chevrolet that had the six two and the six five and then you had Ford with the six nine and the seven three and the six nines and the original seven threes were never really any kind of powerhouse whatsoever and then you had the the Power Stroke that came out in ninety four and a half well you could get a four door truck long bed with a power stroke that had the most power in its class. I mean, Dodge, you couldn't get a four-door truck. Chevrolet, the the 454 had more power than the 6.5 did. So back when these trucks came out, they were the icon of of diesel, in my personal opinion. They, when, when somebody saw one, that was the top of the line that you could get, you know, power windows and locks. And you know, if, if you really splurged and bought like a Centurion, you had leather and wood grain and, you know, heated and cooled cup holders and all the crazy paint on the outside. And you were really uh, king of the town riding around in your $47,000 OBS, you know. So, and I think that has just kind of evolved over time. And I think part of that is why the diesel industry is where it's at. And that's that's where it come from, in my opinion. Yes, the, you know, there was other diesels out at the time and other avenues to get things and i mean there i'm sure there's going to be people nodding their head and and shaking it side to side going no the cummins is where it came from and all that but being as a a a four-door truck with the highest horsepower motor at the time and an automatic or a five-speed i really think that's where this culture 
for, for diesel industry has originated from, in my personal opinion. Well, it's so different than now where all the trucks are pretty much in the same horsepower torque range. They have pretty much the same options, the same configurations. It's very competitive, but you're absolutely right. It wasn't like that 20, 30 years ago. It was, it was very different. And, and I think that really hit the nail on the head with a part of this. Why, why that, uh, that, that culture is so passionate about it is Ford did have a lot of options. They did have nice trucks. They did make good power. And it's, it's not like now where, you know, it's 10 horsepower or 20 foot pounds of torque that separates it. And they all have Bluetooth and heated and cooled seats and everything's pretty much the same. It's just, you know, which one do you want? Well, now, the, different back then. I mean, now the truck war is, is who has the biggest in dash screen. Oh, I've got a 22 inch screen. Mm-hmm. Oh, you've got a 12 inch screen. My truck's better than yours. Cause I got a bigger screen in the dash. There's no, I drive a Tesla around. Yeah. There's, there's no, there's nothing that distinguishes the truck on the outside one from the other like used the, like there used to be you know you could only get a dodge in a quad cab you couldn't get it in a in an actual four door you know and and chevrolet you i mean until what was it oh one you couldn't get a real diesel motor in a chevrolet so you know there's so you just offended everybody that has a six two and six five <laughs> well, I, I, I mean <laughs> they do they do kind of sound like somebody pushed a box of rocks down a hill though when they're running I mean, our grand our grandfather had a six two, so I I mean, been there, done that on that. But I mean, as as far as, I mean, when you went to the Chevrolet dealership, there was there was no diesels on the lot. I mean, there was plenty of four fifty four trucks out there and three fifty trucks out there, but I mean, no, nobody wanted to buy the the six two and six fives because they just they didn't have the power and the, I mean, the reliability was there because they didn't have the power, but. You know, you got the Power Stroke over here with a nice, shiny new motor that Ford's just come out with, with the highest horsepower and then the most features and then the biggest cab that you could buy with the most hauling capacity. I mean, who didn't want a Ford back then, you know? And the other thing is Ford has always been, in my opinion, just a little step higher as far as quality goes into their manufacturing of their vehicles. I mean, the the... The quality of materials i mean these trucks are 25 years old now and a lot of them the seats are still in perfect shape and the doors still open and close like they're supposed to and, and the dashes aren't correct and the dashes aren't busted out and gone and the front end's not well i just, just did com- a good job of offending every dodge owner now <laughs> <laughs> i mean they got carpet that they lay up there or duct tape or whatever but you know the 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 worst thing that we see in fords at this age is either sliding in and out of the driver's seat and the foam is finally starting to break down or the sun has cracked the dash pad in the thing and that's i mean i I don't know i i obviously you can tell i'm biased towards a ford product not that we have a business model based around the ford Ford products or anything but but still (laughs) i mean we both chris and i grew up with our parents driving chevrolets you know so it's it's kind of one of those things that I don't know. You just, even from way back, we we saw quality in them. So, you know, here we are. I think that's very true. Like even, like as a Dodge guy, you can definitely. It, it's been a process, I think, to where now they, the big three, they're they're all pretty close. I'd say in in quality, and maybe even Ram has made the biggest jump, you know, with interiors and things like that. But when you look back, it wasn't always like that. You know, it was, I would say, I'd say that's fair. I'd say that the Fords had, they had more features. They, they were nicer. Um, and it's been like a 20 year process to get it, you know, where it is. And we see that through time. Like even with, you know, you look at a third gen Ram compared to like a 2008 power stroke, the interiors are entirely different. They're entirely different classes. And, you know, now it's, it's tightened up a little bit. But I wanted to ask you guys, what's um, what do you guys got coming up here over the next you know couple months? Are, are there more events you guys are going to, or some big, big product releases, or you know things you guys got in the fire? We we've actually sat down and uh, and discussed you know kind of hitting an uh, getting an event list together for next year and and hitting quite a few more events. Um, and can't really release some of the products that we've got you know quote unquote coming out, but we've got some new stuff that. That people are going to need to get uh, to make their truck better, I guess, or, or fix 
fix issues that have been obsolete for a while? Our, uh, our biggest concern and the, the way we typically look for new products to build is one, we try to build things nobody else builds. That's, you know, because we don't want to dilute the market and, you know, obviously it needs to be worth our time to, to build. So if we can, if we can find something that's a necessity, like maybe a, a common wear item or something like that, we typically, we typically look for, for those kind of things. So they'll definitely be useful parts that we're coming out with. They won't be, uh, there will be there'll be things that people want for sure. Uh, as far as events go, b- about the only event that I can uh, that I can say indefinitely that we're going to be at is uh, as as of next year is going to be Lone Star Throwdown, which is a a pretty phenomenal event if you've never been to it. Hey, what um, when is uh, when's that event? It's second it, weekend it, of February. No, it's the very last weekend uh, in February every year. Yeah, the last weekend of February. Oh, cool. Yeah, it's it's a huge car show. It's a huge car show down in Conroe, and uh, I think we've we've been every year, but the first and second year, I th- I think. So we've they, you know they stopped taking uh, entries to to get into the show in like December, I think, and they cut the uh, they cut the number of vehicles off at twenty five hundred. Wow. It's there, a big event. There, there's car shows in the parking lot because there's not enough room to bring the cars into the actual show event. That's how, how massive it is. Yeah, the spectator parking will have like two or three clusters of cars uh, that, are like, that are show cars. There'll be 30, 40 in each cluster that are, you know, they're like mini car shows in the spectator yeah, parking Yeah, they, they are literally having their own car show in the parking lot. Wow. And people that drive from Canada to Conroe, Texas, from like, uh, you know, New York State. The, the only other thing, too, that, that we're doing is every second Saturday of the month, we're having a, we have an event called Trucks and Tacos. We have a taco trailer that comes out and sets up. And, and basically, we just, you know, get like minded people, whether you're driving a, a Dodge, GM, a geo metro we don't care it's it's you know muscle car uh, motorcycle it it, uh, if you got a four-wheel drive tractor that's real shiny we don't care um you know and and people come up here to the to the courthouse square where our office is and we set up and up and down the courthouse square and just everybody stands around and talks about what their new mod is or what they're fixing to do or a car they just purchased or something like that and and just keeping the like-minded culture of enjoying anything that's that's uh internally combusted um think of it think of it kind of like the old school parking lot uh hang out where everybody got together and just kind of hung out and, and bs'd and and uh we we do it we, we try to do it once every month just uh just to kind of get everybody together you know social media has made us more connected but it's made us further apart too so we're making a, an effort to get everybody together physically you know uh to actually like look at you face to face and actually have a conversation with you. I just heard tacos, and it's probably a good thing I'm not local because I'd, I'd I'd be there all the time. <laughs> they are they are pretty fantastic too. I'm not gonna lie. I mean, who doesn't love tacos, man? I mean, communist? No. I don't know. <laughs> People that like Pepsi. I mean, uh... <laughs> are you kidding me? Yeah. <laughs> it was cool to be able to sit down and chat with you guys and i kept my eye on uh on that the road trip you guys had and the your social media is fantastic for being able to see you know what you guys are doing and and new products but uh i'm really excited to see you know what you guys have done in in the the the, the niche that you guys have filled and being able to connect the culture with the parts with the buying the truck even you know it, it's it's really awesome to see Sure. It's it's fun too. I mean, you know, they say you uh, get a job you like, you never work a day in your life, and I think that's that stands pretty true. You know, if you like what you do, it's it's fun, and then you get to talk to like-minded people all day, and you get to share stories of why they're doing whatever with their truck, or or share stories of why they're looking to buy a particular truck from you, or or things like that. So, it, it's all. I mean, it's just as fun as it is rewarding i guess if that makes sense oh yeah for sure it's it's always really cool to chat with you guys and and there's so many you know different uh different lessons and and, and things that are that are there with you know the passion for the trucks the the 
the business side of it, the, the events, all those sorts of things. So it was, it was fantastic to chat with you guys again. And, and I look forward to, uh, to seeing what you guys got coming out with, uh, you know, parts and things like that. And, and I always like to go see the trucks that you guys find too. Cause I, I always hope for maybe that one day you guys find that mythical 94, 95 second gen 12 valve that you just couldn't <laughs> pass up and maybe it gets on there and maybe they call you guys up. So. Right, right. <laughs> Not going to lie, there is one in town that an old man drives that I have been trying to buy it for about three years now and he won't unload it, but it is absolutely clean. <laughs> but yeah, it's it's always fun to, to, to talk and we appreciate that, you know, somebody like you that has done so much for the industry um calls us and and lets us actually tell our story and and you know talk about our passion and whatnot uh you know a lot of a lot of times these trucks get forgotten and and this side of the industry gets forgotten because new is always the biggest and baddest in the and quote unquote where the money is if you will and and everybody that enjoys the older stuff gets pushed to the back burner. So it's nice to be able to to call and, and I, I say call, it, it's nice to be able to talk to somebody that can put this out there to the to the people and let, and let, let people know that these tr- these trucks aren't forgotten and, and, and this culture is, is not forgotten, you know, that, that there is a huge following for it and, and we enjoy our customers as much as we enjoy the trucks, you know? Oh, for sure. And that, that's what we love doing too, is, is being able to being able to talk with all the different elements of diesel enthusiasts in the diesel community and to be able to put it out there. Cause we know there's thousands, hundreds of thousands of people that are into the same thing that, you know, they, they want the information to be so tough to find. So we always appreciate sitting down with you guys and, and chatting. We'll have to do it again sometime soon. Yeah. I'm, I'm down for, for just about any time, man. Uh, you know, if you got if you get more questions off of this episode and and people want to want to talk more about it, let's let's do it. We're we're always down. We'll we'll set up here in our makeshift studio and our lunch table slash product photograph booth slash <laughs> uh, uh, meeting area and and talk about what uh, what the customers want to hear and what what they want to see and things that they want to know about and and you know keep this keep this industry in and in and of itself alive and well and going strong you know <laughs>